Okay, so my name is Georgia, and I work at the Broad Institute, and I'm a student just like you, except I'm a graduate student at MIT. The partnership actually started with the Broad scientists coming in to curriculum development work and working with teachers to think about what were we actually trying to teach students about genetics and evolution. When I was young, at your age, I really liked asking questions and taking stuff apart. And then as I got older into high school, I liked learning about why we're made of the things we are and how we function. Part of that work launched us into thinking about how do we now bring scientists into the classroom. We've kind of settled on this model where the scientists would develop an activity based on their expertise in what they were doing because we really wanted it to be authentic in their passion for what they were doing. Everyone's going to get a test tube that looks like this. We did a, a small experiment in the group where we used vials of clear liquid to mimic an infectious disease outbreak. There's no actual viruses but we're using this chemical to like represent a virus so that we can see how it spreads throughout the classroom. I was infected and I infected you. Me too. When they get to do the real stuff, and it's not just, yeah, this is what scientists do, and you read about it, and maybe you see a little video about it or something, but when they actually do it, that's when it gets really exciting and captures them. These days, if you want to get a drug onto the market, it'll take upwards of at least a couple decades and one billion dollars. So yeah, it's a little hard to make a drug for every disease. And to illustrate this, I want you all to get up, because you all have a protein or drug and you have a match. If you're a protein, you should be able to match with a drug. This one. Okay, maybe. No, no. Oh, maybe, maybe. It's okay though, you know, drugs don't always work. This is the problem. Science can be for anyone. Anyone can be interested in it. And just the way we come in and talk about the work we do, this is an opportunity that if you're interested in science, you can go and try it out. We talked about the ape index, if you remember, the ratio of your arm span to height, and we asked if that was a heritable trait. Now, why do we care that something is heritable or not? You certainly see moments in the classroom when you say a certain thing or you do a certain activity or you show a particular video that it maybe connects with one or two of them, that they light up a bit, they start asking you really kind of detailed questions. It really shows that they kind of took in what you said and they, they kind of are really thinking about it, posting it and trying to understand it more, which is great. That's right. You know, I didn't even know that I really wanted to go into science until perhaps senior year of high school. There was so much I didn't know that could have excited me early on and I'm glad that it worked out in the end and here I am. But the, this is something that I would really love to disseminate to people who are younger. The way that we trace how viruses are being transmitted is that we use that DNA. I think that if they get a sense of the excitement or the, the fun that it can be to think about these problems and also a little bit about engaging in, in these activities as scientists is something enjoyable, I think that's, that's good. Our original goal was not around being able to improve test scores. It's still not our goal. Our goal is really to inspire children and change the affect they have towards science. That they can see themselves as scientists is more important to us than their scores going up on an assessment. I mean, I'm excited about science. I love science, and I hope I communicate that to my students. But being part of this is one of the best things about being in Cambridge, being a teacher in Cambridge, and being a teacher in the eighth grade. This program is awesome. I love it. Cool, is there anything else? Yeah, please.